Hello, my name is Abbott Austin, and I'm here for another session of Talk Lexio. So we'll do uh, Lexio Divina, the ancient method of praying with scripture. And what we're going to use for our scripture passage this time is the second book of Kings and chapter 4, verses 8 through 17. So this is a, a reading, the first reading actually this Sunday. So as is often the case, I'll take a, a reading from the from the lectionary, from the readings at Mass, especially for Sunday, and we're, we'll look at it. However, this um, this one is, uh, when it appears in the, in the lectionary for tomorrow's Mass on Sunday, it's uh, it cuts out uh, some of what I'm going to read. So there's some verses cut out, and then I'm also going to add some, ver read, you know, not add them, but, you know, read on a couple verses as well. So if you're looking at uh, a reading, uh, the lectionary for tomorrow, you won't hear some of these verses. Okay, let's uh, begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open my mind and my heart to understand your scriptures, so that I may know your will better and have the joy of living by your will in my life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the first step of Lexia Divina, of course, is Lexio itself, that is reading, the Latin word for reading. So we're going to read it, and I'll read it through twice. And again, the idea here is uh, it's not just to get through it, not just to glean the basic information, but to let it speak to you, right? So listen, right? Listen in the deep sense. Listen to what uh, God is trying to say through the human author. Okay, so uh, again, this is the second book of Kings, chapter 4, verses 8 through 17. One day Elisha came to Shuman, where there was a woman of influence who pressed him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he would stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that he is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. One day Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Then he said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shumanite woman. He did so, and when he when she stood before Elisha, he told Gehazi, Say to her, You have troubled yourself greatly for us. What can we do for you? Can we say a good word for you to the king or to the commander of the army? She replied, I am living among my own people. Later Elisha asked, What can we do for her? Gehazi answered, She has no son and her husband is old. Elisha said, Call her. He did so, and when she stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time, next year, you will be cradling a baby son. She said, My lord, you are a man of God. Do not deceive your servant. Yet the woman conceived, and by the same time the following year, she had given birth to a son as Elisha had promised, and the child grew up healthy. Let's, I'll read the passage another time. And listen again, and listen for what strikes you. So what, what jumps out at you, uh, an idea, a word, a phrase, something in the story that grabs your attention. Because that will be a starting point, or can be a starting point for your meditation. One day Elisha came to Shuman, where there was a woman of influence who pressed him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he would stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that he is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. One day Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Then he said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shunammite woman. He did so, and when she stood before Elisha, he told Gehazi, Say to her, you have troubled yourself greatly for us. What can we do for you? Can we say a good word for you to the king or to the commander of the army? She replied, I am living among my own people. Later Elisha asked, What can we do for her? Gehazi answered, She has no son and her husband is old. Elisha said, Call her. He did so and when she stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be cradling a baby son. She said, My Lord, you are a man of God. Do not deceive your servant. Yet the woman conceived, 
And by the same time, the following year, she had given birth to a son, as Elisha had promised, and the child grew up healthy. So we now move to the second step in Lexio Divina, which is to meditate on the passage. And so here we want to ponder something about it. And that's why uh, we kind of listen to see what struck us about it. So what I'll do is I'll go through a few points uh, that struck me in reading this passage. The first one is uh, the kind of the focus on this woman of influence. Okay? So she is considered in good terms. Uh, we see the prophet gives her a reward. Right? And so um, this follows, in fact, this story follows right after another story with another woman, in that case a widow, and a widow of one of the guild prophets. So um, Elisha helps her too. So you have two stories of Elisha helping women. And so what you see here in the first one is how God cares for uh, and is concerned for widows, right? Uh, so they're especially vulnerable, and so God uh, cares for them. And we see this throughout the Bible. The second case, this Shunammite woman is not a, a widow, although there's a passage or a little bit later in the text that kind of indicates that she might become one in the not-too-distant future. But she does support the work of Elisha, the prophet, and so she's rewarded for that. And so um, we see here an important role uh, that we can offer to people or to prophetic people, right? And so... Um, so this would be a second point to kind of uh, reflect upon. The first one would be how God cares for widows and then for uh, what women uh, who participate in the work of salvation. And I'll come back to that uh, part about how she might be a widow in the not-too-distant future. But um, the second thing is that she has this uh, role that uh, all of us should consider in our lives, and it's to support the work of those doing good work, right? Particularly if people are doing prophetic work. Let's say they're... Um, they're speaking a message that really needs to be heard. It's probably not going to be very popular, therefore, but they're speaking a message that needs to be heard, uh, God's message. And so um, we can have this role of supporting people like that. So it's something to think about. We might meditate, you know, who's speaking prophetically in our, in our culture? Right? It's not to say who's the most popular, who's the most influential, not even the sense who is the most, uh, you know, the loudest or speaks to, gets the most... Uh, of a following, right? It might be a person who's not very popular, but they're speaking a prophetic word. Uh, we can have the role like this woman, uh, the Shumanite woman, of uh, supporting that. And that can be an important thing. Uh, people who are doing God's work uh, do need support. It can be very lonely. So we can meditate on that as uh, something too. Now, uh, is she a widow? No, she's uh, married, but when uh, Elisha tries to find something she can do in return as a, a, at a gratitude, uh, his servant says she has no son and her husband is old. So, uh, so what I was alluding to before is that uh, she has no son, her husband's old, so her husband might die soon, it seems to be suggesting one possible way of reading it. And therefore she'll be on her own, and especially vulnerable as a widow. So if she had a son, uh, that'd be a blessing, besides being a blessing in itself. Um, it'd also be a blessing uh, for the support the son would offer. And the, the passage ends, ends up saying the child grew up healthy, right? so that the boy is healthy and uh, would likely be able to support his mother. The third thing is uh, the idea of a reward. Okay, so that could be a starting point. And it's, it's hard to read this passage and not think of the, uh, the passage in the gospel where Jesus says, uh, you know, those who uh, help a prophet will get a prophet's reward. Right, they'll uh, give a glass to a prophet because he is a prophet. Will receive a reward, and that is actually in the gospel this Sunday. So, uh, as is often the case, there's a lining up uh, of, of a, you know, the first uh, reading for Sunday, and then the gospel reading is often uh, a theme in both that are related. So uh, Jesus says that, and it's hard not to think of it when we're reading this story, right? So uh, receive a prophet's reward. So. Here, the Shumanite woman um, helps the prophet, knows he's a holy man of God, and therefore helps him. So she will receive a prophet's reward. Okay, in this story, she receives the reward, so to speak, of a son. And interestingly, though, uh, she wasn't looking for it, right? And so it's interesting that when Elisha has her summoned and speaks to her through the servant, Gehazi, and says, you know, what can we do for you? And she says, basically, I'm fine. I'm among my own people. I'm not looking for anything, 
right? So she helps the prophet simply because he is a man of God, not looking for a, a reward or any earthly reward. So it's very interesting. And it's something we can learn. Uh, Jesus says you will receive a prophet's reward. Well, what, uh, you know, what reward does a prophet receive in this world, right? Uh, not a good one. <laughs> well, the prophets are often persecuted, if not killed, right? So uh, the prophet's reward is not in this world often, right? Um, so if you're going to support prophetic people, uh, you might not get, <laughs> don't look for a reward in this life, right? So the Shumanite woman is not looking for a reward in this life. She gets one. As a sign, really, of something deeper, um, but it's uh, you know it's not something you should look. So if you're going to support prophetic people, as we should, and we should look for the reward, it's not in this life; it's in the next life. It's in the reward of pleasing God, which has its brings about a peace in this life, um, but ultimately is receives the fullness of it that reward in the next life. So um, that's something to uh, be mindful of as well. Uh, if you support prophetic people, you might actually suffer with them. But we will get a reward, and the reward might, though, be only, and it will especially be, in the next life. So those are some things we can think about in this uh, passage. There's other things, of course, and uh, but the idea here is just to help as we kind of start thinking about it and enter into the text more deeply. From that meditation, then, the third step in Lexi Divina is to offer a prayer. And as I like to say, it's very uh, important here to, or what I recommend, uh, you can always pray to the Lord however you want, but what I really recommend in this process is that you take uh, your meditation and let that become your prayer. Okay, so your meditation lets you to see something uh, important, something good, holy, um, and then you, from that, you form that into a prayer. And what happens is you're lining your will up with God's will by seeking in prayer uh, what God wants. And then that leads to the fourth step of Lexio Divina contemplation where you have that union with God, that lining up of your will with his will called the moral union. So let's now um, offer prayer. And what I'll do, I'll offer a prayer myself. Then I'll pause for a few moments. And then um, we'll uh, have some quiet for contemplation. Before offering a prayer, though, I'm going to read the text one more time. One day Elisha came to Shuman where there was a woman of influence who pressed him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he would stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that he is a holy man of God, since he visits us often. Let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. One day Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Then he said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shumanite woman. He did so, and when she stood before Elisha, he told Gehazi, Say to her, You have troubled yourself greatly for us. What can we do for you? Can we say a good word for you to the king or to the commander of the army? She replied, I am living among my own people. Later Elisha asked, What can we do for her? Gehazi answered, She has no son, and her husband is old. Elisha said, Call her. He did so, and when she stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time, next year, you will be cradling a baby son. She said, My Lord, you are a man of God. Do not deceive your servant. Yet the woman conceived, and by the same time the following year she had given birth to a son, as Elisha had promised, and the child grew up healthy. Almighty God, I ask for the discernment and strength to support those who are doing prophetic work, even if they're not popular, but to offer them the support that I can so that it may join in their work and receive their reward. I ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then for the final step, we'll just have some moments of quiet and uh, you kind of rest in your petition, whatever your petition, your prayer to God was, to rest in that for a few moments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you for those who joined. Um, for those who joined later as a recording, uh, feel free to put comments in the, uh, the comment box if you have some meditations or reflections or prayers to offer yourself. God bless.